Raptor can itemize in a lot of different ways. And your Terror Blade, while it does have early presence with like Brad and Lance Yasha, it needs so much more. So you will need to try to slow down that spec by considerable amount. And ease of execution, I would say, is on spawn side. I think their draft is a little bit easier to play. But I think UDVs are equally matched in power spikes as long as the laning phase kind of shapes out at battle. least even. Yeah, it should be very interesting. I mean, we do have game number one underway now between Sport and UDB. It is a best of one, of course, so one of these teams does have to leave the qualifier already, right after this game. Which is going to be a, a rather sad start for one of these teams, but obviously a, a much better start for the other. Uh, and this is the only series in... What is it, John? Look at, look at Spawn. Sponsor name. Spawn. 458. Sponsor name. Spawn. The lol. Sponsor name. <laughs> it's like, guys, what? we have a sponsor slot here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, that's one way to put it, I suppose. <laughs> They're not being very subtle about it, are they? Do you want to sponsor no. them, John? You and I? We're just. What are we? We throw like a couple K over, they can put our names there? You know, that's what we'll do. If they. Spawn at momongdaya.johnx might podcast? <laughs> what podcast? <laughs> don't, don't podcast. Oh, I knew this was going to come up. I knew this was going to come up. I know I forgot to tell you a date, all right? I know. <laughs> anyway. You, you should have known to tell me. You know? You should have known to tell me about a day. Do you remember I, that you forget? That's I literally woke up. Mike. I literally woke up today and I thought to myself, oh no, I forgot to tell him a date. <laughs> the battle begins. I'm gonna go see John X5 today. I forgot to talk to him about the date. Uh, Sport? Uh, they're not gonna deal with an elder title with the uh, three stacks of that astral spirit bonus damage. They'll just leave him beat. I'm telling you though, John, if they qualify to TI, you and I will throw a, we'll throw a bit of money at Spawn, we'll, we'll sponsor them. That's it. I don't think we what? can meet their sponsorship demands, Mike. You know, well, why not, these, John? Are, these are lads that know their value. They're not going to accept a $5 sponsorship, all right? <laughs> That's all for salary. <laughs> you know, slow down, Mike. I'm not committing to that just yet. <laughs> Mom, I'm dying. Feel it's gonna be going out of here. Now, th this is a very boring lane. You and I have talked about this many, many times, but Ember vs. Uh, Ember vs. DK, probably gonna be a very... Unless I make a mistake, we can look elsewhere. Oh. Down bot. We do have a Travins on the Phoenix and 458 on the Spectre up against BB and Boom Boy on the Snap and Beastmaster. And this lane does get sillier as time goes on. You know, once up dive bombing Hawks there. There's some really weird things that can happen. If you if you dive as a Phoenix Icarus dive and you get into the range of a Hawk, you can potentially get rooted. And then you're stuck in a really oh. ugly position as a Phoenix. So there, there's That's a lot brutal. that can go on down there. I think this lane should be pretty stable for Spondo as long as they don't play overly aggressive. Focus on the farm, focus on building up in 458. Hit those initial farm spikes and start to play around with a shadow step. But in lane, just take what you can get. Don't push the envelope too hard. You have to respect the burst damage and control that UDV does have here. Look at the top lane. Oh, in fact, hold on, KMP. KMP's dead. First blood. Top lane, DeLong, he hit level two. He just earth spike into Hex and Red took care of it. Ligonac at least able to find a bit of a trade, but it, it won't really feel that great. You just lost your TB and I mean, props to DeLong. He just, as soon as he hit level two, he just jumped right in. And that's what you have to respect here, Satera Blade. Like that chain control from a Lion Stun into just Starbreaker here for Red can be pretty devastating. So you have to play back. You do have a pretty big spike when Metamorphosis is up. There's a lot of pressure here on Leonac to just try to get this Echo Stomp off. If he doesn't, then it's a pretty open lane for Spawn to just run down. And you have to kind of watch yourself there as we do get a call out to fix a cam. Come on, boys. Just, Let's fix his cam. He probably just slammed his table after that death. Let's be honest, John. Cam probably just <laughs> fell, off the, uh, <laughs> fell off the screen for a moment. It's all right. We get a KMP. I've slammed a few desks in my time as well. Don't you worry. It'll, it'll be fine. He's back in the lane now, but it is a very hard lane to be fair. Like, this lane doesn't get any easier as time goes on. I feel like for UDV, this top lane, because the, the Dawnbreaker, the spell she has, like, as you level up Celestial Hammer, the damage gets insane. And the thing is, this lion never gets easier to deal with. It's just the thing, with those double, the, the double disable it has available to it. I, I feel like you're going to be struggling for a lot of farm here for KMP. You have been denied. That you will be. And that's already reflecting in the CS, having a bit of a rough time. A little bit better than 458, but... 
Piper hasn't died yet, so you're, you're still happier here on the side of spawn. Mid lane has been going pretty smoothly as well for Mamang Daya. So overall, a very strong start here for spawn and UDV. Where do you really need to kick in is maybe by around level five, once they approach initial level sixes, we do have to see some play. I'd like to see some aggressive vision coming out down the line as well. Right now, not too much coming out. You have a lot more aggressive vision coming out from spawn. Here we go. That's mm -hmm. Stomp's gonna be out at least to stop the, uh, the star break that was to come out from red. Now the Lord getting chased down, but well, in fact, he's in trouble. Leonax gonna keep trying to chase him down. Earth Spike will be out from Delol. In comes Red to try and help out. He has another hammer. Leonax will go for another stop. But I think Leonax just dead. The chase on Delol, he ends up paying for it. Sure, he'll save K and P for now, but the, the thing is, Red, once he has a bit more mana, the, the harassment starts again. Yeah, it's not gonna be the smoothest of times here. Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, I think he's just dead. They're trying to get there to help him out, but they'll dive in past the tier one. Leonax, he <laughs> might get a stop. Can he actually get a kill? I don't necessarily think so, but no, never mind. The Lord's out of mana. Nice body block from red, but the Lord's still trying to turn back around for a moment. Regardless, I mean, you got KMP. So who cares about this lion guy? Yeah, it's no big deal. Like, again, you're, you're running out from traits here for spawn. I'm a little bit surprised KMP is so That's conservative with metamorphosis. Like, in that turnaround play when Leonap was chasing, I think he was waiting for a meta out from KMP for him to try to dance around, get that kill, maybe threaten onto the Dawnbreaker as well. Now they managed to get that rotation onto Fearless. That's a great rotation from the lol. This lion already having so much impact. Just at this level four mark, and he's level four at five minutes already on this line. That is huge. That's gonna be sub ten minute level six timing easily, and that's that's a huge problem. Like this finger is not gonna feel very good for KMP, who's currently sitting at two hundred eighty HP. He gets stunned once he's dead. Oh, and Delon, he always found it. KMP is just getting zero farm, even with the metamorphosis pop. This is just such a sad state of affairs. That it is. No relief coming out for KNP anytime soon. No stacks being built up either. And the lull's still stealing away a bounty here and getting some forward vision going, ensuring that the mid lane's gonna be pretty smooth for Mama Gaia. They rotate boom boy onto mid now as well. KNP. Are they gonna dive every time, KNP? Oh boy. Where's Leonak? Leonak, he was trying to stack, I think. He'll be in Dyer's time for a stop at the very He's least. So KP track. will survive, but now the rotations, they will start coming. KP! He turned around! Oh, he'll survive. The hammer was long enough. Has been killed. Oh. The lol, the lol should die for this. Red will go for a run. Red might be dead himself, but the movie is going to land. And the stop will be around to follow up. So this time around, they will punish. Sure. Red, he'll go for a hammer. Run that was away. unreal. Meanwhile, Fearless dies again. What did you learn? Traven's rotating on the Phoenix to make that happen. Really, this lane start is terrible for you, DB. And it's not going well. Like, with the, with the supports distracted, they see this opportunity mid. They just land that kill on the Ember. Good read coming out here Radiant from Travins. And GDV not getting too much breeding room. Like, it was fearless this lane that was kind of coming out okay. Now he's two levels behind in comparison to Mami Gaia. Should have a six shortly at the very least. But there are no early spikes on the Ember. And he's got the remnants of the lane. They need to look for an opportunity down bot. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, you don't want any more deaths happening here for UDB. He'll cancel his TP off at the very least, so it does get to stay in the lane for now. Meanwhile, mid lane, like in terms of dealing with Mamang Dyer, it's a Dragonite with a double bracer and tr strength threads build. Like, there's not really much you can do about this guy right now. They'll try to stop. They'll rotate more heroes into the mid lane to delay this mid tier one tower going down. But overall, it seems like the DK is going to have his way with it eventually. Meanwhile, top lane, KMP gets left alone, so Red immediately starts harassing the TB out. And that's kind of the choice you have to make right now as UDV. Like, do you defend the mid T1 tower, or do you go back top and protect KMP and allow him to at least hit some creeps in the top lane? Well, Travis is going to find him. KMP in trouble. The Lol going to cut him off as well. The TB really has not too much gameplay. They'll go for the Solar Guardian to boot just to make sure that they've got the damage. 
And then it just keeps getting worse. Like, this TB has no support at the moment. They've chosen to defend the mid tier 1 tower instead. But it's a 3v1 in the mid. That there's three heroes to stop Mamang Dyer from pushing a tier 1 tower. And he hasn't even got Dragon Form yet. I, I feel like this is a huge misplay from UDB. Dyer's top tower. For sure. I mean, tower. even outside of just defending mid versus a side lane tower. Never refuse gold given. The lesson, lesson for you. you. Captured in the captured in Four, five, eight, bottom lane. They have found the Spectre. This will be a huge one, and they'll get it. BB just committing the raw to ensure there's no games to be played. And I, I don't quite blame him, but the start they've had, they need everything they can get. Radiance bottom tower. They do. They will attack. sacrifice their mid, but again, mid tower, not the biggest in comparison to the side lanes. So they'll trade for the bot tier one, and if they manage to use that space, Dyer's they're still in an okay position for UDV. You are 3 feet behind. This is giving Mamudai a lot of room to just build up on this game. They're still coming in for the defense. Yeah, they want BB. Okay. Maybe it's too slowed up. Stop will come in from Leonak, but now Mamang Dai has joined in the, the bottom lane. And the third boy doesn't seem like he'll make it. Another two kills to go the Dyer's way of Spawn. Tower is under attack. And now you've officially got the level six timing on the line. So ex expect to smoke up towards the top lane, I think. Find the Terror Blade again and just finger him down. Dyer's top yeah. tower has Not fallen. much KNP can really do about that. He has a six, he's pocketing that, pocketing that point in the Sunder to see if he can get away with a bit of a greedier skill build, try to farm up. But the, the map is shrinking, and you, again, you haven't Double managed damage. to trade that tier one bot, so the bot lane's not opened up the farm. You are getting some room for BB to just try to stack off and try to get some build up. He is rushing the Ags here in this game as the Beastmaster, which does make sense up against the Spectre and the clump up you are expecting for a spawn. Let's see if that timing does line up, but no ore is to come out. Nothing to relieve that pressure that's on the Terror Blade on the entire team right now. Just playing it for himself. Oh, it BB, but a nice cookie away. Solo Guardian still committed. The stun will land. They should have enough damage. BB will come out. No messing around. They'll take the kill, but now the rotations. Gillis is in. Travens will be the target. Travens will get the egg off in time, but it will be left to die. Oops, yeah. Boomboy will take care of all the little shredder is now red. Red will go for a run. Back and turn right back around on Boomboy. Takes a kill for himself. Red, he will run towards the west, but it won't be enough. He does go down, but not before claiming a mega kill streak for himself. That is not as worthwhile as you is as it seems. When I mean, you give a bigger streak back to Fearless, so suddenly this Ember has a little bit more of a game. It's gonna get a few more items up. His path towards his Spirit Vessel isn't too Dyer's slow now for Fearless. And KNP does get to show up in lane with some activity coming through. Can start to focus in on that tier one. Again, they still have some tools on hand for spawn, but this should be a tower take now for the side of UDV. And again, this bot here went so He's gonna try to jump in to trade, but there's no damage on the auto titan. And Boom Boy is not making it out either. The Starbreaker lands, he's down. Mamang Dyer with a triple kill on the Dragon Knight. And that's gonna be another T1 tower. They are just running all over UD Vessel 1. It is just not even close. Oh, look at this, John. Look at the stats. BB. They want red. They want both of them. Mamang Dai is slowed up. He'll get stopped. Feel is still chasing. Mamang Dai low now. Surely goes down. The axes will land. Into the Roshan pit he'll go. Mamang Dai, how lucky can you get? Roshan not hitting him. He'll get taken down. KMP will be the one to claim the kill on the Terror Blade. And it seems like UDV are finally fighting back. Not they are, Dyer's but losing the stacks, having to attack. pop Roar onto a DK that's in Roche Pit, doesn't feel amazing for UDV either way. They still have a lot to try to compensate for. They need to get that D ward on this OBS ward. Like, it's the OBS ward giving them so much vision. Again, we talked about this, but Spawn has had such great aggressive vision in comparison to UDV, who don't have the best reach across the map. Spawn going for a little bit of smoke with just the lull. He does have the finger ready. 
I mean, why not? Get those stacks up. Oh, and he's gonna run right into KMP. Yeah, he's found him, John. This is depressing. Oh, no. KMP, no, no, it's not an illusion. But the hex would have deleted it, and there he goes. This is a depressing <laughs> carry game to watch. It is. Yeah, it's not an easy time for KNP. Spawn have been playing so damn well. Their offlane's just fully enabled. They've been getting a lot of value out with red and with the lull. There's not much room for UDV to breed. Like, they don't manage to connect on, onto this movement of Fearless, and that is one shining point. I suppose outside of the line, the Ember is sort of free to dance around. But that is only if the lull is not around. Like, if the lull is there, the Fearless is not going to have the best of times until some defensive items start to come true. This is buying a little bit of space out for UDV, but it doesn't feel like you have any bigs. Some ores. On the Beastmaster, yeah. make him more durable. That's where things can really start to count, and he is going for that pipe of insight next. So some of the ores will be coming true, but it'll, it'll, it'll take more time. Can P, he's just trying to go into a Yasha. He has even a Midas up. Just to really try to get some fun to catch up. That's all. It's oh, fearless. Oh boy, I, I, I gotta give Red credit. Like, Red and the LOL have been doing a fantastic job here. In particular, as you can see by the tips, the lol's the one who's getting most of the credit on the line. Quite the frankly, yeah, he has been doing a fantastic job setting up. And speaking of that line, the, the lol's gonna have a blink up and 200 gold. That's a real concern. So the line with the blink up, you've got all the initiation you could ask for as Mamang Dia just blinks out. What? He just blinks out. Reacts fast enough. There's a little bit of a delay in that scatter blast, so sees it, manages to jump away. And and this is what we were just talking about a while ago. Fearless has to really be careful about the line. Like th that's the lull without the blink. He has his blink flying out now. The fact that he even manages to find that setup for something like the Ember is a pretty ugly look for UDV right now. Again, and they've got the ags on BB, but he needs more ults. It's not going to help for too long here, it feels like. They're going to want your Guardian Greaves up. <laughs> better. Radiant's bottom tower now, it, is under attack. It's a heavy farm game. Three hit for spawn. At the very least, this lead has a one for spawn. The UDV are keeping it equal, so they're not losing any more than all the app. They are keeping it at the place, very least. But my turn is still for division. These wards coming from spawn have just been causing so many issues. No one's playing up top, but they've also got the info that no one's playing up top. Red. Oh, chains miss. They missed the chains. That is, oh, they missed the chains. I don't... It, it's small mistakes, John. Very small mistakes, and now you've wasted the kisses for another two minutes. The so without the kisses up, you. Red's not gonna He's die. Never tried. It's just the UDV, it's just another, another two minutes where spawn can feel very safe. No kill threat, you need to tie in with all of your spells. And to be fair, it's a little bit awkward trying to dive that deep anyway. Not sure why UDV were trying right by the tier two, a TP point, shadow step ready. Like it's pretty scary to try to force a fight that way. <laughs> so they miss out, but they don't lose heroes at the very least. Again, keeping up in that word at the least not losing out anymore in map efficiency they're looking at top the law was waiting for fearless fearless may show himself again but realizes something is a little bit wrong here so he's gonna back it's gonna be just fine Fifteen to nine right now. Like it's three K advantage. At least KP has been given a lot more space on the TV to farm up. Here. So you've got that going for you. As it seems like the law has finally been spotted. They get a ward down. They'll see the line. They will punish the law. So happy days here for UDV. Suppose with, with the game state the way it is, you're just you're playing the the slow game now as as UDV. Just buy time. Give as much space to your cores as you can. Just split push the lanes as much as possible. Though I question whether you have the better late game scaling kind of drafter as UDV as well, because you're up against the Spectre. Now, even DK and Dawnbreaker scale quite well these days, and 
But I just, I question how well UEV can do scaling into the late game at this point. I think they can scale pretty well. Uh, you can just kind of get a silver edge on KMP if you can find a farm. Get a little bit of that break action onto 458 to prevent the Spectre from being a massive issue. But it'll take time. They drag down the lead to just 2k. And I think once you have some defensive items up in Fearless and a little bit more of that aura play on BB, and the play starts to line up for UDB. Just preventing these solo pickoffs that they've been doing now is really the key here is Daya. Yeah, they've got the solo guardian to come in, but it's not going to be enough. A nice stop. Leonak, he's got the splitter as well on three. This could be a big cleanup for UDB. He didn't get the counter of anyone down. 458 is still just running. They've got at least the Dawnbreaker breaker red. Red trying to get out, will not make it, and now the aircraft right in the middle of the ball, and just takes it down. What a mess. Spawn just panicking a little bit. Two K for with two. Now the lol shows up, but he doesn't have the damage. Leonak will survive the finger output. A little bit unfortunate for the lion. And it's starting to line up again. You, you, they've got that play ready. They've they've got their terribly ready to join in with Sanj and Yasha. Just enough stats for him to feel safe in the middle. And now they've got Roche opening. Not too much time left on that metamorphosis, but they've got the output. And without that egg, without that shadow step, without that solar guardian, there's no opening for Spawn to contest. Here we go. Hey, Roshan freely taken. This just feels like it should Roshan not be happening, but UDB get away with it. Dyer's he will take the Aegis from himself attack. and the Ember. <laughs> and suddenly the game looks like it just flipped on its head. You, you've got KMP second in their worth now as the, as the TB. And he's attack. very close now to, to just working on towards that Eye of Scardi. Once you've got the Scardi timing on the TB, things change quite a bit. So the, uh, the power spike he gets is pretty insane as Delol, who was playing a perfect game. He's now being chased by an, an astral spirit. And the final Imbiz rune though, so it should be okay to leave. But as Spawn, it felt like they were playing a perfect game. And just a couple of mistakes and suddenly it's turned right back around. But they're gonna make the jump in on the Beastmaster. No finger to play with this time, but they won't need it. That is the one advantage. At least with the Shadow Step, you can still play fairly quick. Yeah, you still have this global gank potential. And where spawn shines right now is when they can isolate UDV into the solo pickoff opportunities. They still have his really good forward vision playing in the top jungle. So UDV still has to respect that. But I, I think Radiant it's fine. Again, as long as KNP is farming, as long as BB and Fearless are kind of allowed to catch up, like your item spikes are still set. BKB on Fearless is going to be massive. The Ember's not going to be pinned down. You have nothing to pierce outside of the Solar Guardian if you can kind of connect, but without setup stunts, connecting that onto the Ember feels optimistic. And you've got the Egg as well, but easier said than done for Travens this game. But a snap fire on the enemy side. <laughs> Shoving in Bond, Top's being shoved in as well by the side of Spawn. They will defend successfully with BB, relieving some of that pressure. Not fully committing on either side yet. Got the Echo Saber up now for Red. Going into that Harpoon. This Dawnbreaker is still really scary if you are isolated, so... For EDV, what we need to see is... Maybe just a little bit more emphasis on team fight. That's where they've been shining. It will take the gate across to dodge Radiant's out middle tower is under attack. Of course, KMP might be left a little bit alone, but they don't seem to have a read on that just yet. Oh, they're bringing him back. Yeah. Yeah. Fearless is here. Leonex stuck around. They're the chance for the DK, but this seems like bait. Mama die though? No, never mind. They want to leave. They'll just pop the BKB and get out of there. <laughs> it just didn't have the, the numbers to really take that fight. And sadly for them as well, Red was about five seconds away from having Solar Guardian available. Now, had you had that Solar Guardian available at the time, I think they would have happily made that jump. But without it, you, you don't really want to risk it. Just play it safe. You pop the BKB, charge down to seven Daya's seconds here for Mama Gaia. Not attack. the best feeling in the world. And you get a Radiant's little bit of an opening for mid. The KMP around with Metamorphosis still ready to go. This is around. 
fearless. Dropping very, very low. Does still have the air. This is going to be okay. They do have to commit the kisses to allow him to get out of that. But I suppose fearless is just wanting to play on the edge right now, considering the state of the game. Just trying to look for opportunities, trying to look for any overextensions from spawn that they could punish. And it doesn't quite pan out, but you force out the BKB use from red. Oh, under attack. He has no finger. Would have been hard to get the kill anyway with the uh, with the flame guard up. So it looks like he's just gonna leave. Stunner down from the Mondaya. Fearless is still perfectly fine. I suppose they just don't want him around this area. Driving out. Tear him off a little bit, cut off that farm. This is still space once more for KNP. You're perfectly happy, and he does get the arcane rune bottled up here, Fearless. More spell spam coming out. Radiance mid still set to fall. Under attack. BKB not too far off for BB. Yes. He's still diving pretty far just to shut him away here. They call him Phyllis for a reason. No longer got the boy. Yeah, they've caught the Phoenix, they'll get the kill. Kravens is gone. On to the T2 tower, though, guys. Dyer's top tower is under Dyer's top tower. They've got the men of all this available on KMP, so he can pop that to get the extra damage if he needs to, but... That seems like UDD is very confident now in their ability to just take this tier 2 mid tower for free. And that, it seems like they will. No real contest here from Spawn. They feel a little Middle bit tower unsafe fall. without the Shadow Step. So 4 5 8 can get in on that sucker. They do have the Guardian ready. They've got the Harpoon ready on red as well. They managed to sit through the Aegis expiring. There is that, and they managed to get a free shard for red on top of that. So he does have that debuff immunity from the Starbreaker now as well, with a little bit more magic res. But UDV, they've clawed their way back into this game quite nicely. And if you look at the graphs, it's not in their favor just yet, but they've managed to equalize the game Radiant's in terms of net worth and EXP. And they're starting to get some spikes going. You know, again, that BKB not too far off for BB. Scotty's up for KNP into his own BKB. The, the debuff community is going to be huge because you're so reliant on landing that Dragon Tail or Earth Spike in Hex. And once you get the three to eight, you're on top of it. Maybe always target at first. Beastmaster still alive for now, but not for long. He's just gone. <laughs> UDV, I mean, they'll try to defend him, but then, oh, yeah. oh, 458? That's, that's an aggressive jump, 458! 458! He's running. He might just make it, but he's lost all his HP. He needs to reset. No more Radiant's fighting, 458. Get the hell out of there. Huh. That's Everyone in this game is crazy. About. Yeah, they're crazy. Radiant's Radiant's jump? Top tower is under he attack. decides to commit the real hero? I mean, maybe they were looking for that bait play into the egg, but no one bites into the bait from UDV. So now you're down egg, you're down solar card, and shadow step not long, it's cool down, but there's an opening here with a attack. respawn coming out on BB. They could look to play. I mean, they still have a roar ready. He's just not been able to use that spell. Just needs an opportunity. Gotta get there too. There's a TP available, jumping from Fearless. They found Travis in the back, but Travis not gonna get checked out the down red being targeted. The red is just perfectly fine, at least for now. But they do get another figure out. Red is gonna be able to avoid that completely, however, and now the Shadow Step comes back in. Green Travis has gone down, but he's been caught. KMP could not sunder. He could not sunder in time. KMP is down again, and now the cleanup. <laughs> Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Ah, uh, he he stood around and for a moment trying to look at that line. Take a second to to think about that P and off and you just get stunned oh, up after yeah. it fades. Now, it's so much easier to catch these heroes to try to BKB TP out. Just, just happens. UDV. They've lost a little bit of that equalization now. A spawn definitely in a solid lead. 4K up. Managed to increase that by a good amount. They've got the Scotty up in 458. They don't have a source of break just yet in UDV. KNP is going for that Shadow Blade into a, presumably the Silver Edge here to have that break source up. But 
you really need some of these BKBs to line up. You need to line up these BKB uses across your cores, at the very least with BB and with Fearless. Because it feels like every single time BB just dies, you, you can't take these fights without the roar. You need to have that pipe of insight pop. BB dies before he can, he can even pop that. And you're not getting value from your Ags. We'll have to see if UDV can kind of find that kind of opening and with the BKB up and BB spawn. They are still feeling great. Butterfly next for 458. They're going to get the blink up on red. And the Ags, it's already done in Mamang Dai, going for the full AC. This is where that DK starts to feel like a very scary court to play into with his own damage output. Still smoke out from UDV here. They want to run, it, run right into it, Mamang Dai. Huh? Just gonna walk away though. To be fair, he does have BKB TP available, but I suppose the roar is also available from the Beastmaster. TP's coming up top, so it seems like Spawn are prepping for a fight and also prepping for Roshan, which is available. Comes UDB. You also get to the high ground of the twin gates, but there are wards around from the radiant side of things, so Fearless does get spotted. They might jump in. Delol, he'll barely miss out. Fearless will get the BKB in time. He'll chase down the line immediately. Delol is gone. No flyback. You don't have to worry about that. Fearless, yes, he's man. lost his BKB now. Fearless will jump by the spin. Then comes the solid guardian to give it a new roar off the spectre at least. Start breaking landing on two, but 458. 458 is gone. He has buyback, but does he have a way to get back to the fight? His TP is on 10 seconds worth of cooldown, so he actually can't get there in time. Roshan goes the way of UDV for free, basically. That is insane. Like, Fearless baiting out a lot of spells, instantly locking in that line, taking away a lot of their hard control. It's actually the right play. Like, he finds that squishy target, he forces out the egg in a really awkward position. They're not able to play around his chain stun that we've been seeing spawn succeed in with the egg combination with with Radiant's the top tower with the attack. lion kind of protecting it. Doesn't Radiant. come out. Radiant's and top tower. Four five eight. He gives a massive streak out to K and P. Like that is a huge amount of gold to feed onto this terror blade. Eclipses everyone else as number one in network once more. Silver Edge not going to be too far off now for K and P. This game does get a lot tougher for the Spectre once that break is online. Like, you are relying a lot on dispersion to just let you live through these engage and split that damage apart, but the break just nullifies that. We need to see Spawn kind of try to land this combination again. It's just down to having, like, Solar Guard and Egg threatening the same area overlap. So you, you have this big area control onto even just one. Like, these plays onto BB were the right call, but now that Fearless is taking point, it's a lot tougher to pin down that Ember. Like, as long as Fearless is smart to his BKB use, then catching the Ember in that six second span is going to be a lot tougher. And it provides so much room for UDV to think about how they want to approach those fights. Now the Silver Edge up on, uh, on KMP, that could be a bit of a problem here for the DK. And the Spectre for that matter, in fact. And suddenly, UDV looking like they're the much stronger team. Radiant's courier has been killed. Been very back and forth this game, though, to say the least. As <laughs> the UDV aggressive posturing once again, looking towards the bottom tier two tower. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Not gonna last very long. There'll be no defense to come from spawn. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. They are pushing the top lane, <gasps> so Fearless is gonna be forced to rotate to defend this. Meanwhile, the rest of the team does just smoke up, and KMP is actually TP back towards the mid tier 2 to try and has been scan out somebody early on. And he's gonna find 458. With the Silver Edge, 458 has no idea that he's around, but he seems to sense that something is wrong, so he does back his way out underneath his own vision. He'll see the Terror Blade right now, but KMP has no idea. There's no idea he'll be watched. It's the UDV around Mamang Dyer at the moment. Mamang Dyer. And he's not the easiest target to try and take down, but maybe with the break available from KMP, they could. <laughs> Here comes KMP. Or is that? We've got the break. We've got the dig. Very, very nice. Not the. It's under roar. Radiant's top tower is under attack. They should be able to get one creep cut off. All Radiant's top gone. tower has it's fallen. Gone. From there, start. Not you expect. 
losing out in all that with showers. We, we have this good opportunity to just see each other. Shades. Shades. to get back to world the base. He is not top metamorphosis yet. Though in his defense, he does have the Aegis front of the mid and the half, so... He'll just wait that one out. Try and do it the old-fashioned way. Sounds fearless, but fearless is gonna be just fine to walk away from this. Radiant's top tower. the tears for the tower, but... The spawn have no choice but to fight, and now... Well, without the wall available... <laughs> I suppose now they can't fight. And they do have buybacks on both those cores. Or fire bait. Get locked down for a moment, Sunder out the KMP. They're trying to force him back just a little bit, but KMP still has the ages. And they go again. They know the meta won't be popped until the Aegis is gone, so they'll jump the B spot. BB is gone. He'll just BKB and run. No bash ride, do believe, so everyone else just gets out. Worth. Good. Good little hit and run. BB sacrificed, but you save the Aegis, although it doesn't have too much time left. Follow up fight wouldn't have been clean for UDV if they opted to utilize that. They cut their losses early. Closer they to take my a piece. melee racks for their trouble. And suddenly they're in the advantage. 6k up here for the side of UDV. Win probability at 62% there with you. Pretty much what Spawn had for most of the game here. Although, fearless. Oh, fearless. Oh, he, oh, he eats the cheese. He's got the cheese, you eat it. He's all right. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Oh, that's close. He, He's on the edge, forces out the finger, forces them to show their position here on mid as well. So that, again, provides some relief for KNP to keep this farm game up and some time for BB to be, to be back in this game. 22 to 19. And this matchup, on paper, it was supposed to be pretty close. It looked pretty one-sided coming out from the lanes. Not gonna lie to you, Mike, but you need to reel it back in. And again, okay, with the map good. state the way it is, with the tier two still up, with all the scaling left for KNP, it gets a little bit scary. Like, the team fight still feels better for Spawn, but they haven't seen a lot of those opportunities here. <clears throat> Certainly not. Uh, win probability right now is like basically 50 50. 51% the way of UDV at the moment, uh, to be exact. So, a very close matchup here between these two teams. So the chase is on now for 458. 458 should get hit by KMP. They won't pop the metamorphosis again, though. There's no real point anyway, they just did not have the lockdown to follow up here with the Terror Blade. But can they just go high ground again? Like, even without the Age of Sarp, they still have meta. It seems like they may not risk it. Dyer's bottom is under attack. It really feels safe. If you take even one, equa one tool out of that equation of a team fight, for spawn, it starts to feel a lot better. Uh, being targeted. He's okay, though. 458 was forced to BKB to try and get that kill safely, and he doesn't even get that. So now Dyer's you know the BKB's down for, for a bit of time. There's that at least, but, but that, even that's not going to be enough, really, to try and force a high ground yet. Still looking for that kill. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. It's a start. It just happens. It's a supporter of BKB. Not really much. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And UDB needs as well. I found it. Finding something fields is massive. Is take away that big egg area denial here. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Playing it safe. You are doing some split push action coming out here from Amgdaya, sieging onto a tier 2, we'll find it. With the Ag's fully done on her DK, along with the Assault Curious up. So the DK is starting to become a split push monster if you do leave it alone for too long. He's going for that Manta build up as well for the Illusion Spam. A lot still left for Spawn to reach into. Side of UDV. Probably just waiting for that next Roche. 20 seconds away until we see that respawn timer. If they can secure next Roche here, UDV find another tap, find find another high ground part opportunity. If they play their cards right on that high ground, then it could potentially go into the tier four. It's into the ancient. As long as Metamorphosis is smartly used by KNP, that possibility never disappears here. Still a big group up in the radio. 
UDB. They're, they're almost hoping somebody shows up here in this triangle. Kings up for 458. They saw him underneath some vision. 458, he's got no idea they're coming. UDB. Just jump right in. How do you say it? The answer is you probably don't. The Earth Spitter will get the job done, and now Red needs to weigh up, and so, so much damage. Red is gone. Two down. Yikes. There are buybacks at least, but Radiant's you don't want a problem like are under this. Attack. Dyer's middle tower no, is under this attack. is the old thing. If you take two tools away from that team fight, Solar Guardian down even with a buyback. You have this opportunity to just siege. Rain tracks goes mid next. When they buy back, but Solar Guardian's still down for his respawn anyway. Now Fearless will be able to get himself out. So they'll lose two cores for the price of the support, but it's a good fight for Spawn. And they do also successfully protect the mid the mid rats. So only two teams went down. This puts a lot of pressure in Spawn though. They've got to find Roshan. 40 seconds till respawn. It's gonna be a south side spawn as well. But they've got to make their way down there. There's enough time for, D for UDV to have actually potentially contest. It's not going to be the smoothest times for spawn to just go for Roche here. A little bit scary. If they lose out from Roche for spawn, the high ground opens up once more without buybacks on your spec and your Dawnbreaker. And that defense looks a lot shakier. They've got to find their bodies down here. They've got to secure it. Got the right idea, but they're scouted out already by Leonak. Ha! <laughs> gonna no. move in, stun out there. have found Leonak. In fact, so Leonak's gonna drop. <laughs> There's another one right by the tree line. Boomboy's just hiding in the corner. As we have a buyback from Leonak, I suppose for Roshan. That's fair. They know how important it is. Like, this is make or break. If Spawn manages to find a Rosh, they're back in the game. They can force out a fight, force out these buybacks in UDV. They're not sticking around to secure it. Well, I'm surprised they're giving up this position. Mamangdaya and Travis are hanging around, but respawns are up. KNP is back along with BB, and they, they're free to take Rush if they want to. No vision even. Like what? Spawn just backs off without Radiant vision drop as well. They will smoke. Yeah, they actually had a ward on the lull, but he didn't place it. Maybe now he'll do it by the twin gate. Should at least. Yeah, they'll get the vision down now. So he, luckily for them, they still had the time. <laughs> Both sides gonna wait for the for the other one to to go first by the looks of it. Nobody wants to start the the Roshan themselves. Because the one big positive you do have for spawn is the the Spectre can farm while you're doing this. Like while you're waiting for Roshan, four five eight is still accumulating more than they're worth. You can always shadow step back into the fight. But Fearless can do the exact same. He can always run it back to his team. So he's going to just deal with the top wave. UDV, they are going to four-man smoke. A bit of a wraparound. Among Dyer may have his own smoke broken in just a moment, and does. Sneak away, makes the wrong way, but has the Shadow Blade around the sort of end, so we'll survive. And now the no has been spotted. He'll dagger away, in fact. UDV, he'll go after the little door breaker. Now the egg, it's on top of the cliff. This is a good one. This is a good one, but it seems like even then it won't last, no one will. Travis finally gets the egg off. And even the fight is going to be very, very bad as they are just melting. Fields just jumped right in. The wall, trying to get out with the TP is not going to make it. Four down for Spawn. And UDV, they may as well just go high ground. There's no need for Osha. They, they take the fight, they know there's no buybacks on these two big heroes. And Mamung Dai is already going for the creep cut very early on. Blinking forward finds the wizard rune, but... With the creep wave being as healthy as it is... They're going to have to pop 40, they're going for tier 4s! Why not? Why the hell not? There's two heroes down with that buyback available. The big ones as well, like red and four by main, neither one has it. Just fine, they are still focusing on the T4 towers. And now the ancient UDV, they are not meant 
messing oh, around. Fuck. Don't just go right for the jugular. The score was on the need to find an answer. In 3v5, how could you possibly defend this? They are still trying to get it done. Mama Dyer, he'll go down, he'll fly back, but the Ancient, it's a couple hits away from dying and it's gone. Yes, play. UDD. I mean, it was such a bad start to the game, but they still make the win happen.